Okay, never mind. He's trapped. <laughs> you gotta stop blaming other people for your problems. We gotta take control of our lives again. This is how we should be honoring the victims. Mingus has told me so much about you, and by so much, I mean he's been really cagey. Mom, can you stop, please? What's up, bitches? What does someone wear to a sex party? <laughs> Tonight, remember our friends, not as symbols, but for the messy ass sluts we know and love. You ready to play, Chief? What the gay hell? You know what that's called? Healing. I want to feel alive again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you gay? <laughs>
I, I'm I'm not sure. I can't really speak for them um, specifically, but um, I I am really grateful for for them. You know, well, like welcoming me into these early conversations uh, because it, you know it's obviously a, a it was a traumatic experience for them, um, but you know it was I, I was very upfront early on about how that it was not the story that we were going to tell. You know, I wanted to learn their lives around this night, not not I, I, I didn't want the show to be about this night defining our characters. You know, and that was something that I think you know really uh, came up a lot in conversations. What did you learn from those conversations? I mean, I I learned so much, honestly. Um, I I learned so much about that the confusion and disorientation of that night, um, the ways in which, the difficulty in which it, it people had in forming sentences and being able to put into words what that experience was. But I also, you know, I learned about the lasting impact that that night had, and the and the and the ways in which um, everyone responded differently. There is no normal way to process something like that. And um, and every path is dignified and of value. And I think that's something, um, and everyone should feel the exact way that they, natu- they that comes to them naturally. And that was something I saw a lot of and something that, I, you know, I, I, we, that really motivated us in the telling of these stories in the show. Yeah, I mean, the anniversary is coming up and it is Pride Month. And unfortunately, gun violence is still very much a thing. We've experienced it in the past few weeks quite a few times for the community and also for allies who love going out to celebrate Pride, but they might be scared because of what's been happening in the past few weeks. What message do you have for them? I mean, I let, you know, I think... That's a that's a very nuanced question mm-hmm. um, because I like like you just described like following pulse. I really did feel um, I felt like a safe the idea of what I knew was a safe space was taken away from me at that even though I, I was in Toronto miles away. I I didn't feel safe going out into those spaces and I think a lot of people and especially after the last few years we've realized how crucial space is, how important it is for queer people to take up those spaces. And no matter what um, people say, people can you know, either tell us not to say gay or frighten us from going out. They cannot stop us from being who we are. Um, and um, you know, we will not stop. We will not, there is, there, there is nothing, no hate, no amount of hate can silence the amount of joy and love that we all have inside. And no one's going to stop us from showing that. Absolutely. Looking back at all of the amazing work that you put into this freshman season, what are you ultimately most proud of? Oh, there's so much. I'm so I'm so proud of the I'm so proud of our our cast and our our writing team. I'm so proud of um, Jacqueline Moore and her work in telling trans stories on our on our on our show, um, um, and Ryan O'Connell for um, driving us and the, the disabled queer storytelling into new terrain. I'm so proud that we have an episode that has a disabled crip rave at the center of this episode and has so much like like empowering, um, differently abled like sex scenes. Um, a really I'm, good episode too. I'm, I love it. I lo- I'm so proud of this, these incredible drag numbers um, that that uh, you know with Finn Argus, uh, Armand Fields, Ryan Heffington, our, our choreographer, and our, our wardrobe and hair team created. I- I'm excited for our soundtrack. I mean, you're gonna have to end this interview soon because I, I I can't go on. Like, I'm so excited about this because these queer characters are so unapologetic and so messy and I just feel like I've rarely been able to see that and I cannot wait for people to get to meet these characters. Absolutely and to wrap things up I mean you have went over so many amazing storylines during this freshman (laughs) season and I love the show so much that I binged it all in one night I couldn't stop because I needed to know what happened next (laughs) so I hopefully will be predicting that you'll get a season two if you do where do you take the storylines from here? 
Well, I can't really say that, but let me say I, it is something that I have been thinking about nonstop ever since we finished the show literally two weeks ago. Um, so um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to talk next next time, maybe even in person next time. Uh, well, here's to hoping. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So great to meet you. You as well.